Before I get started, I'd like to ask Mama Rosalind, G. Perdone, may I have permission to speak? Thank you. That's the African way. That's our tradition. That is our culture. We honor the elders amongst us. And in the organization that I represent, Black Influences United, we say, be you, if you take the first letter of each word. That's what black history is about. It's about being you. We have an elder, and that's our practice, and I want to represent that today during Black History Month. And then before I start, I want to ask God to guide my mind, to direct my speech, and take me where he wants me to be, because this is important. I want to thank your president, Dr. Ains, your provost, who's here today, Dr. Brazil. I want to thank your vice president, Dr. Williams, and to me, most importantly, I want to thank your student government president, Ariana. I'm so pleased to be here amongst students because I know the power of young people. And if we're talking about transformational change, it is young people's time. It is young people's time to transform the world that the, the older ones of us have messed up. It is your time. And I just uh, know that any movement that happens in any, any country, any any movement that happens around civil rights, any movement that happens in terms of transforming governments that are corrupt, it is the young people that lead the way. So when we have student leaders, I'm always happy to be in the presence of student leaders. I have some friends here today that I have to acknowledge. I see here in the audience that we have some, some very important people, very important people. I see the Baker sisters. Long-term educators, long-term, fighting against systemic racism in the K-12 space. I see my brother, Dr. Stephen Jackson. That brother right there is a national leader in education. Um, I see my brother, Shamik Robinson. Where is he? Shamik Robinson is the president of ABNY, the Association of Black Educators of New York. I see Dr. Angela Green. Where's Dr. Angela Green? Is she over there somewhere? Well, Dr. Angela Green, I see her daughter representing, so when you see, you know, as they say, when you see me, you see my mother. <laughs> Dr. Angela Green is the chair, recently appointed chair of the Public Education Policy for New York. So we have some special people in the house. I want to thank you, Dr. I don't want to say your name wrong, Como. Dr. Como, for your, your, that, that beautiful history lesson that you gave us. And I was sitting here thinking, I was sitting here thinking, you know, when you brought up 1976, the financial crisis, that was the actual era that hip hop emerged because the schools in the K to 12 space removed art and music. And so all across these communities, black and brown communities in New York City were these young people who had creative energy but nowhere to channel it. And as a result, they used their mouth, they beatbox, they beat on the table in the cafeteria, making the drum. They, they had their, we used to call it playing the dozens, but it was the beginning of rap. They had their sound, their sound big uh, booming systems where they would build these speakers for my brothers and sisters who came from Jamaica and brought that culture to New York. And then there was a DJ by the name of Cool Herc, who was the father of hip hop. So there you see a connection between blacks migrating from the South into New York City and our immigrant community coming from places like Jamaica, Haiti, Barbados, and all these places, 
merging to develop this culture which began, which is, the, which is part of the beginning of hip hop, but it would not have happened had not the music and the arts been taken out of the school. So how ironic that I would become the hip hop principal and reconnect the school back to the culture. So I just wanted to say that. So we're speaking about the, the 55th anniversary of your college. And as it was said, my father, Dr. Blake, the big Dr. Blake, he reminds me of that all the time, <laughs> was uh, involved in that fight to bring a quality educational institution to the community of Southeast Queens. Um, I thank him for being here today. Cool. Y'all don't know how excited I'm about being here today. I've been wanting to talk to the scholars for a long time. We have also here today my organization, members from my organization, who I really am, when people say, he's the leader of BU, I say, no, I am the representative of the leaders of BU. And BU stands for Black Influencers United. I have to give them a shout out. Would the members of Black Influencers United please stand? That's my people over there. Right. <laughs> um, I have a history with your college. It's ironic that, that I'm here today in this very room because seven years ago, when I first got my doctorate, a friend of mine called me and said, I want to have you come speak to our students and our faculty and, you, and this is going to be the first time that you're speaking to them as Dr. Blake. You know, when you first get your doctor, you're like, oh, yes. <laughs> you know, you, you want everybody to know that. I'm doctor, doctor, doctor. You remind everybody every time you can. So I was excited. So y'all know y'all did that. Come on. So my brother, who is a family friend, a childhood friend, and just a, a person who I admire and respect, for many reasons. Community organizer, works with students. My brother, Dr. Anthony Andrews, invited me here seven years ago to speak at a Black History event hosted by the Black History Month Committee here at York College. And, and I, I really want to thank you, my brother, so now that I think that I got all the thank yous and acknowledgements and everything out of the way, I want to uh, talk to you today about some things that have been weighing heavy on my heart that I think it's important for us as a community to consider. Um, 